to be alive in Scotland and in Edinburgh, the capital of, the capital of the best free country in the world. Now I say that not as a boast, I'm just reminding you that one of Alex's predecessors spent a fortune getting a PR company to come up with that slogan. But actually it was the best small country in the world. We ditched it because it was too much of a boast then, and it'll still be too much of a boast until we are, until we make Scotland the best free country in the world. You know, it's great to be in the side of the angels just for once. Now that is not to, to infer anything at all about the folk who are here, who are our fellow Scots because I love them just the same, with exceptions. <laughs> but just remember, the day after the independence vote, whether it's win, lose or draw, they're still our fellow Scots. They're still our fellow Scots. And we'll still have to work alongside them, and we'll have to rebuild alongside them. <laughs> I'm an independent, you see. I get to be nice about everybody. <laughs> so I'm just asking everyone here, think about this. I like talked about the, the numbers of people who support independence, and the PA is even now reporting that people in the march have said that they've changed their mind in the last year. If a third of Scots believe in independence and want independence now, every one of us has got two years to persuade another one Scot and then we're home and dry. Now that's not fanciful, that is just practical. I'm very practical, you know. And it would be, for me, an honour to be able to stand here in a couple of years' time, if I'm invited back, that is. <laughs> and say, well, I'll tell you who it was I persuaded, because there's a number of candidates I've got in mind. See, Alistair Darling. <laughs> oh, don't boo him. There's, there's always room for sinners to repent. <laughs> I think you would want to be afflicted, so I'm not going to. <laughs> but we can laugh about it and enjoy it because life goes on. And you should remember that when you're persuading your one person that you've selected as victim. <laughs> Talk to them in their ground. Stand where they're standing. See it the way they see it. What is it that I've worried about? That we couldn't possibly pay the high unemployment rate that they pay. Have you ever said no, you, like it? you can't be independent because you'll want to still be getting an uh, unemployment benefit from us. That is a, that's a signal of failure. That's an admission on the part of the government that they can't be going to write. And instead of being up with this torch about you couldn't possibly leave the embrace of Mother England or Greater Britain or Bitter Britain, whatever it's called. <laughs> Instead of putting up with that, tell them they've got a brass neck expecting you to commit your children and their children to a steadily diminishing state. Not a crashing failure, but steadily diminishing all the same. talk about defence policy, I'll tell you why after. But when they say that you couldn't, you couldn't possibly have a defence policy, do you know that they've got to hire in Nimrods to do the reconnaissance of our fleet, uh, uh, fishing fleet and fishing grounds and oil reservoirs just now, do you know that? They haven't even got the planes to do it themselves. And they send soldiers and they send men to foreign parts to fight wars that are very dubious and in some cases definitely illegal. And, and they've got the nerve to 
spend them without the proper equipment. What a state to want to be part of. And the reason, by the way, that I said it was dark for the SNP to say, oh, here's the policy. Don't forget when you're talking to that one person that after the independence rally, after the independence vote rather has been won, then the, the party politics come back into play. And we don't know who will be the party in power. So therefore, we don't know exactly what the policy will be. We can find out what the principle is beforehand, but you don't know all the fine details. So, oh, well, you're absolutely right, but no tomato, I said that. <laughs> now, there might be some people in here today who disagree with us, but it's not a deal breaker if you think that we should stay in NATO because there will be plenty of room to decide after independence exactly what we are taking. And although I'm very pleased to see some flags from Europe that I recognised from 50 years ago from similar marches, I don't think there's only one way to be part of Europe. And I think that Scots should be made aware of it. There's a better choice to make. We don't need to be in the EU, and we certainly don't need to be in the Euro. This is, this is where the organisers wonder if they were wise to invite me. <laughs> However, I am an independent. I'm here to encourage other people that this referendum is not about parties. It's about every single Scot. It's about you and me and this one doing here that wants to stay in NATO or something. I'll put up with you, brother, if you put up with me. But <laughs> <laughs> it's our referendum. It will be our independence decision to make. I sincerely hope that Scotland find the courage to do what Scotland really wants. And I believe that in my heart of hearts. Because even the folk who are opposite no! us in Parliament just now, picking up wee, wee itsy bitsy points, and dancing on them, trying to inflame them, to make them a big argument against independence. A lot of them have doubts too. Don't forget that when you're talking to them. They're in a party, and they've got their party politics at the moment, mixed up with what should be entirely personal and should be principled rather than party political. I'm glad to hear that some of these ideas in containing drink are taking taking out. However, I've said my piece. I'm so happy to have been here today. I'm very, very proud to have been here. Now if you don't do what your auntie Margot tells you, you're in big trouble. <laughs>